Praise the Lord, everybody. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Can we stand to our feet all over the house? I wonder for the next moment or so if we can just welcome the Lord into his house. This is his place of worship. And we've come to worship him tonight, this morning. Amen. Can we just take a moment, just lift your hands in the room and just begin to love on him. Lord, we thank you today for allowing us to, to be awake again, Lord, to live again, to breathe again. Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord, for life, health, and strength. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for being the faithful Father that you are. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. And this morning, we just want to exalt your name. Come on, can somebody speak to him this morning? morning and just begin to exalt him begin to lift him up let him know how much you appreciate him lord we appreciate you you didn't have to do it but you did we didn't have to be alive today but you woke us up this morning we thank you lord for life health and strength we thank you for our hallelujah we thank you for our hand raised lord we thank you lord clap your hands and give the lord glory this morning all over the house
How many of y'all truly know that our God can do anything? And there's nothing too hard for him, amen? And sometimes in this walk, we can believe God for somebody else's thing, somebody else's situation.
as a body of Christ. Just declare one more time. Sing hallelujah. not raised would you raise your hand come on there is an atmosphere of faith and expectancy here it's in this type of atmosphere that anything can happen when I say anything I mean anything I mean there there can be cancer that is gone there's tumors that could fall there's depression that could be gone there in this type of atmosphere anything is possible amen and I wonder if there's somebody here this morning that you are expecting God to do something in your life. You need something this morning. You've come to this house and you've said, God, I have, I've turned every other place. Today, I need you to do something supernatural in my life. I wonder if somebody can begin to just clap your hands. Come on, can you begin to lift up the name of Jesus? Can you begin to just call out to him? Can you just begin to say, Jesus, I need you. I've looked everywhere else. I've looked to the doctors, I've looked to drugs, I've looked to all kinds of other things. Today, God, I need you 
to do something in my life this evening, this morning, in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. One more time. Can you just clap your hands to the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've come expecting God to do something here this morning. Amen. I, I was, uh, my wife and, and uh, they, they had to get here early and I had the boys and I'll tell you what, I, I just felt that God was going to do something supernatural in this place. Amen. You're like, oh man, that's kind of weird, you know, but no, that God, my God is a supernatural God. My God does not operate, amen, in the natural. Amen. My God is supernatural. My God can do anything. My God can do anything. Amen. If there's a financial need, my God can, can work it out. If there's a healing that needs to happen, my God can work it out. Amen. Doctors may say there's no way. It's done. It's, you know, hey, you just count it. it, it it's finished. That's my God has the last word. Amen. Amen. My God has the last word. And we want to, uh, we're going to do something a little different, but very biblical. Amen. I want to read a verse of scripture to you in Acts chapter 19. Verse 11 through 12, it says, Now God worked unusual miracles. Amen. Unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Amen. Through a handkerchief or an apron, they, take, they would take Paul's handkerchief, his apron, amen, and they would go and lay that on the sick. Amen. Sickness would flee. Sp evil spirits would be gone. Amen. Just by that handkerchief or that apron. Amen. And we're, we're, we're going to do that this morning. We've been praying uh, for two individuals. We've been praying for Brother Taylor. Amen. Brother Frankie's dad. And we've been praying for Sister Velasquez's, uh, Sister Velasquez's mom, uh, Bernadette. Amen. And Brother Velasquez, if you would come. And I'm going to ask the pastoral staff if you would come. Amen. And gather up to the front here. We have two handkerchiefs that we're going to anoint and we're going to pray over and we're going to believe God to do something so miraculous in these folks' life. Amen. Brother Taylor is battling leukemia. Sister Velasquez, uh, Sister Velasquez's mom is battling cancer. I believe today, amen, God is going to work a miracle. Amen. God is going to work a miracle. Amen. We also want to pray for Sister Brianna who's in the hospital. We also want to pray for Sister Denisha who's in the hospital. Can the church begin to lift up your hands right now as, the, as we pray? Can you begin to cry out to God? Can you begin to declare healing on these people's lives? Can you begin to cry out and just begin to, to say, Jesus, I'm standing on your word this morning. I'm standing on your word, God. You are a healer in the name of Jesus, God. You are victorious over sickness. You are victorious over disease. You are victorious over anything that is going on in our bodies, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I declare it right now. I pray for Brother Taylor. I pray for Sister Velasquez's mom. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray healing to come upon their body. When these handkerchiefs touch them, Lord, in Jesus' name, cancer is going to be gone. The cancer cells are just going to evaporate in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Sister Brianna, Sister Denisha. God, in Jesus' name, we declare it. In Jesus' name, you are a healer and you are a miracle worker. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can we just lift our hands? I feel the presence of the Lord. Jesus. God, we need you here this morning. Oh, come on, come on. It's okay. It's okay. We can just take a moment to worship Him. We can take a moment to entertain His presence. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder if you can just put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Come on, can you just begin? Can we bind together this morning? Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Jesus, you are so real. 
Jesus, you are such a great God. You are such a, a miracle working God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we lift, we lift up those that are in need, those that are hurting, those that are hungry. Oh, Jesus. Yes, that's it. Come on, whatever your need is, whatever your need is this morning, there is a God that is here that loves you, that cares for you. Oh, there is a God here that wants to work in your life, that wants to work on your behalf. Depression has got to go. Sickness has got to go. Oh, in Jesus' name, anxiety has got to go. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord? Thank you, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This is biblical. Amen. This is, this is apostolic. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see everybody here this morning. Amen. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. So excited for all of our guests that are here this morning. If you're here as a guest at Family Worship Center, we are so honored and privileged to have you here. Amen. And uh, amen. Amen. Uh, so good to have Brother Kevin Daniels here. Amen. All the way from Atlanta. Amen. We, uh, we get to carry him over from Friday night. How many of you are here Friday night? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Amen. For the Frankie Taylor live recording. I'm telling you, I cannot wait for the album to get done and get released, and, and uh, we need to help him with that as much as we can. We need to help him with that. There is going to be costs and there's things, but I'm telling you, the songs, amen, they're, they're not just cover songs or, or secondary songs that he got from some other place, but these are apostolic amen. written songs, amen. amen, that are anointed, that are powerful, and I'm telling you, amen, amazing, so... Uh, man, what a great time we had on Friday night, amen, and so uh, just uh, we're excited to have Brother, Brother Daniels here with us. In fact, why don't you reach across the aisle, why don't you shake somebody's hand, amen, why don't you let, let them know you're glad to see them in church this morning, amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Amen. Um, just in the way of announcements, as our ushers begin to prepare uh, for this morning's tithe and offering, amen, just some very uh, uh, quick announcements. Uh, December 13th, and I'm going to say this right. I know Brother David isn't here, so he can't defend himself, but it's, we all know, uh, you know, when you get, at least I do, Brother David, he's taken after me. I, you got you to gotta botch something. I think I said Sister Denise is in the hospital. She's not in the hospital. She's just homesick. So we're praying for her. So don't be calling Sister Denise. like, hey, are you in the hospital? Brother Brad said. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, she's homesick, so we want to pr uh, pray for her. But uh, I'm going to say this right. We have the ladies' ugly sweater Christmas party. Amen. Amen. <laughs> On December 13th, all right, those of you are like, what is this guy talking about? Our, one of our other folks that d does announce me, he said the ugly ladies <laughs> sweater. <laughs> uh, but uh, don't, don't miss out on that. If you are planning on going, very important, ladies, very important. If you are planning on going, you need to go to the Welcome Center, and you need to register, or you need to let 
uh, the Welcome Center know or Sister Monique know that you're planning on attending so that we uh, get an accurate count for food and, and all of that good stuff. But it is going to be a lot of fun. How many have enjoyed what the ladies and what they've been doing? Amen? Amen. All right. December 22nd is going to be our Christmas service. That's a Sunday morning. We've got something very uh, planned, very special for you. December 22nd is our Christmas service. And invite somebody. Amen. We're going to have our, our children's choir and just a lot of great things happening. So don't miss out on that on December 22nd. And then also December 31st is going to be something very special. I'm really looking forward to this. We've done communion, but we're also going to do something else. We're going to have church communion and family game night. Amen. So we're going to start it at 7 o'clock. We're going to do communion. Amen. I'm excited about that and, and just uh, bringing in the new year right. And then we're just going to hang out, have some games. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the champ at all the games. Uh, well, well, Brother Ellis likes to practice the games first, if he, whatever games he brings. So, uh, but we're going to have a lot of fun. So don't miss out on that on the 31st. Amen. Uh, bring food. Bring enough food for you and your family. Uh, desserts. And we're just going to hang out here and just have a great time. And then uh, January 6th, we're going to be starting Financial Peace. If you don't know what this is, uh, Dave Ramsey, a, a biblical Christian-based uh, a financial uh, uh, debt reduction system. Amen. Very powerful. Very. Uh, I, there's been stories, even in this church, of folks that went through it and and saved and got out of debt and then ended up buying a house. And and God is God just really works through it. Amen. So don't miss out on that. You can go on our website. Amen. Wearefamilyworship.com. You could go on there and you can register for the financial piece. And last but not least, and I'll be done, and out of everybody's hair, uh, January 12th, everybody say saints meeting. Amen. amen. If you are uh, a member of this church, amen, very important to be here Sunday night. It's a Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We are going to be having a saints meeting. We've got a lot of things to go over, uh, especially uh, when it comes to uh, what we've done this past year, amen, look at this beautiful building and just everything that's gone on here. We want to give everybody an update on that. We also um, uh, want to talk about the coming year, amen, and just what, what our plans are for the coming year. And I'm telling you, God is going to do some amazing things in 2020, amen? Amen. How many believe that? Amen. 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 Why don't you stand to your feet this morning? Amen. Of course, you can go to, uh, if you want any more information, you can go to the Welcome Center. They can help you with that. Or you could visit the website, and we're working on that. Um, uh, but we are Family Worship Center, doc, or we are Family Worship. I'm sorry. We are Family Worship.com. Amen. And you can get more information on what's going on here uh, at FWC. Amen. All right. How many are ready to worship in your giving this morning? Amen. Amen. We've sung and. We've, we've uh, worshiped the Lord in, our, in song and dance, but we're also here to worship Him in our giving. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why don't we bow our heads this morning. Let's ask Him to bless this tithe and offering today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord, for your spirit that is here and the, your presence that we, that we feel in this house, Lord. And we want to continue worshiping you in our giving, God. And we give, uh, we give to you cheerfully, and we ask that you bless this tithe and bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we, why don't we uh, uh, come to the front? Amen. We'll be marching this morning. Let's give it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Also, the Sunday school can be dismissed. Sunday school can be dismissed. Amen.
privilege because uh, when I was when I came here on Wednesday, one of my other friends, he had never, uh, Brother Lawrence Trump from America, he hadn't been to other churches, so he's like, uh, was, this, was this different than the last church building? And I said, a little, <laughs> amen. Um, the neighborhood's a little different too, amen. So it's just, uh, I remember it was two summers ago, and that's when y'all had already, the other church, y'all were, um, had that timer kind of at the end of service to, you know, get on out, and that was that was the beginning for me, the beginning of the testimony for you guys too, and just to um, come here and to be in here. It's just a testimony of the power of God and the faithfulness of his church, how he rewards us, amen. So thank you so much and uh, 
excited to be here for Brother Frankie Taylor and uh, when he, he got the opportunity to minister. I actually met Frankie in 2005 or six. And uh, the way we got close is because people would come up to me and say, hey brother, great jobs on the drums. And then um, people would go up to him and say, hey brother, great jobs on the piano or directing the choir that night or something like that. So um, we kind of got close to this joke where people, even his daughter, I think she went and said, he looks like daddy or something like that. And, um, so if she thinks that, then I guess most other people, they have a basis to form that on. But it's been awesome to watch him through the years and him stay faithful and serve and, um, and God just reward him. His life is a testimony, his ministry is a testimony. And this music that he's recorded this weekend is gonna touch nations, amen? It's gonna reach nations. And you all are a part of that too. Everyone who helped, sang, pick something up, cook something, uh, especially cook something because I got to eat it. Um, everything that you gave, whether it be seems big, small, up front or behind the scenes, literally it's a seed that's when somebody hears one of these songs and they're ministered to and they, it's, it, it encourages them to keep believing, it encourages them to keep going, to keep staying faithful. The work that you put in, the prayers that you put in, know that your seed is part of that ministry, amen? And uh, yeah, and that deserves a hand clap. But thank you, Pastor, for opening your, your all, I guess your service to me. I apologize. Uh, maybe next time I'll speak. <laughs> and, uh, he said, do you want a speaker? I said, uh, um, it's like my virtue level is pretty low. So, uh, uh, but I am glad to be here. And there's just a beautiful spirit in here. And uh, the congregation is, this is how the kingdom, this is how heaven's going to look like. It's just to see the multitude of backgrounds, ethnicities, and cultures and everything. Amen. That's what heaven's going to look like. There's a song I'm going to uh, sing. So we originally planned uh, to meet this morning. We had some technical difficulties getting in and stuff. So uh, we kind of had to speed through everything. And we ended up almost, I'll say one song short, but there's a song I was going to teach everybody. And um, unless they all flowed in the gift of prophecy and we got up there, it probably wouldn't have worked all together. So I'll try to sing it by myself. Amen. And this song is a a reminder, for me at least, that uh, God wants my service, and God wants my faithfulness, and uh, he wants my, just me to be active in the kingdom. And, and the world needs that. Uh, the body of Christ needs that. But one thing we, God needs that often is forgotten is our prayers. He, he, he covets, he desires for us to be in a place where we're praying and we're interceding for those around us and those in our family and those even in this congregation. And uh, sometimes, even in myself, I can go through life and have seasons where maybe I'm just, I'm, I'm doing the discipline of prayer and um, at some level, maybe the habit of it. And I'm not saying not downsizing that, or sometimes it just becomes casual or even devotional, or just like, I, I, okay, I, I punched my clock. Now let's go on to other things. And okay, God, I gave you this morning, or I gave you my lunch, or I gave you night, I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, you know? And, um, and all that while, there's a voice going out calling, say, my child, like, there's, I need your prayers. I need, because there's a situation you've gone through that I need you to pray for somebody else and intercede in a manner that that one sister who's the prayer lady in church, you know, every church has that one lady who does all the prayers, like, oh, if you need to get healed, talk to her, you know, it's like, and because um, some reason we, we feel like we can't do it or something like that. But the truth is each and every single one, single one of us have things that we've gone through that there are prayers that we can pray that someone else quite can't, can't quite understand, amen. And whether you were, weren't raised in church and you came into this later, your prayer for a lost person is going to be a little different than somebody who was raised in church and, and God moved through the staying power and there's somebody else going through something. And you're saying, hey, I have the testimony. I was able to stay. And then there's some of you who may have been up and down and through, and that's a testimony in itself. And each and every one of us in our testimonies, our giftings, our situation, God is calling us to pray, to fast, to, to give more devotion because there is a purpose in the, in the kingdom, a divine purpose placed on each and every one of our lives in this time. And as the end is coming soon and soon, it's not time for us to be more relaxed. And this is not a, uh, 
it's not something to say we're not doing good, but it's just a reminder for me that every day there's this call to prayer. And that five minutes in the car here and 15 minutes in the kitchen there, God is looking for those moments. So I'm going to try to sing the song. I haven't sang it for a while, so um, bear me a little bit of um, grace. Amen. And then I'm not Frankie, so don't expect me to sing like that either. I won't have a reprise either. Amen. If you could just worship, Lord, we love you. So thankful that you allowed us to be here. Thankful that you gave us breath this morning and life. And we know, God, that there is a call that's going out to you. A call to pray, God. A call to, to lift you up. And I just want, Lord, as we sing this song, for you just to call and meet each, each and every one of us in a personal way. in my life. Fight 
return will you find me comfortable in my own dreams or will you find a life poured out looking for your return more than Focus more than ever, more than ever. Now is the time. I'm making a decision. I'm recommitting myself, Jesus. I'm more than ever, more than ever. Committing Jesus to go all the way more than Praise the Lord. Beautiful song, anointed song. Can we all stand together right now? Can we just lift our hands to the Lord and say, God, I want to give more than ever. Come on, from your heart. Lord, I want to give my resources more than ever, my time. I want to talk to you more than ever, Lord. I want to fellowship with you more than ever, God. Hallelujah. I want to be touched by you, Lord, more than ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Daniels. Beautiful song. And uh, beautiful presence of the Lord here. I, too, want to just mention a couple of things. There's a marriage night out on December the 14th. It's $30 a couple. Please RSVP with Sister Wilson. And there's a youth Christmas event on December the 14th. Ask uh, uh, Brother Justin, Sister Jade, and Brother David if you need the information on that. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Um, I too want to say something about uh, this last Friday night. Um, it was perfect. The anointing of the Lord was here. And it wouldn't have been anything without that. Amen. And uh, just, I'm just so proud of Brother Frankie. Proud of him. I was proud of this church. Amen. Because everything went great. I mean, it, from the front door to the end of it all, it was, everybody pitched in and it was great. I got so many compliments about that fact. Man, this was really good. Amen. So give yourselves a hand. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand. And um, God's got great things for us in our future. Well, glory. How many's ready for the word? Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to go to John chapter 13. And read one verse of scripture, verse 27. John chapter 13 and verse 27. Everybody got it? Shout hallelujah. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest. Do quickly. Do quickly. Amen. Uh, it's going to take a few minutes to, to, to build this and lay a little foundation, but please stay with me. Everybody say, I'll stay with you, Pastor. I'm not going to go to sleep. I used to be a pitcher in baseball. I can throw this bottle right on and just wake you right up. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. One more time. Clap your hands before we're seated. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. <clears throat> this setting of Scripture is um, very familiar with everybody. There's a uh, the Last Supper picture. How I many? Probably everybody's seen that. Uh, a lot of people have it in their kitchens and living rooms and all that. But you know, in that, if that's correct, if that's a correct picture. Jesus is sitting in the middle of his disciples, and he's, he's called them together because he's fixing to go to the cross, and he, he has them. It's a very intimate time. Uh, they're washing. He's washing their feet, and some of them, in fact, most of them, or all of them, don't really understand what he's doing. They have thought all along that Jesus is, is coming to set up his kingdom. And to them, that meant uh, he's going to overthrow the Romans. And he's going to give them their freedom. And so, uh, you know, there was one uh, mother that was even kind of arguing with people about her sons. One's going to be on the right hand, one's going to be on the left. And they were all getting their positions ready for this New kingdom with Jesus. And they really did not understand. The revelation hadn't hit them. In fact, if you read a few verses before our text today, Jesus even told them that. That, yeah, you don't understand now, but you will understand. And, and as things happen, it will become more clear to you. And so, I want to try to paint the picture today of, of what uh, has happened in the setting of this and and um, and the disciples and the, they had been with Jesus now three and a half years they had walked with him he had tried to train them and and um, and and he uh, you know he 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 really never um, he never really had told them that it was going to be a physical thing, a kingdom. But it was going to, you know, in his mind, there was a whole different deal. And so they're there, and, and uh, 
the one disciple is laying his head over on Jesus. Most scholars believe that was John. And um, uh, I, I never have really understood Judas. I really haven't. Um, they're all gathered there. They're all talking. Jesus is going around one by one and washing them feet, their feet. He comes to Peter, which he doesn't understand at all. He said, you're not watching, washing my feet. And uh, Jesus basically tells him, well, you'll have no part with me. If I don't wash your feet, what does he say? He says, well, in the, if that's the case, then wash my whole body. Amen. But Jesus said, well, if you wash your feet, you're clean. If I wash your feet, you're clean. And so they, they, they really wasn't getting, they wasn't on the same page with Jesus. And, and, and so uh, Judas is, is there among them. And Jesus is there. And John is, has leaned over. I've always read that. And I never really caught it until yesterday, uh, reading over it again. I've always thought in my mind, you know, that, hey, they're, uh, they're sitting there and, and uh, G- uh, Judas knows exactly what's going on. Jesus knows exactly what's going on. And, um, you know, he's going he's gonna to take the sop. And, and why in the world would Judas, Jesus said right before that, the one, why would he take the sop? That was pretty dumb. You know, he says, the one that's going to betray me is going to take the sop. And then Judas reach out and grabs the sop. And it's like, dude, what's wrong with you? But I, I got a different revelation of it. This is my version. I think it's right. I think the Bible will actually back it up. But I believe this. John was leaned over on Jesus' chest. And Peter was sitting right there by John. And Peter told John, ask the master. Go ahead and read the few verses before that. Ask the master who it is. Jesus had just told them somebody's going to betray me. And so Peter said, ask him. So John's leaning over like this, and, and Jesus talks right into John's ear. And he says, it's the one I give the sop to. And so, Judas probably didn't hear that. It was an intimate whispering in the ear. And Judas, he thought he was cool. Judas is the guy that, you know, all he thinks about is money. All he thinks about is getting ahead. He's not agreeing with Jesus on a lot of things. And so, what happens is, Judas thinking that he was doing something great, reaches out and takes that sop real quick. Like, I'm special. I got the sop. Because he never heard what Jesus said into John's ear. The one that's going to betray me, I'm going to give the sop to. Amen. And so Judas never heard that. And how could he be so dumb if he did hear it to reach out and take the sop. And at that particular mo- uh, time, that moment, that exact moment, the Bible says, Satan entered him. Amen. I don't know and I don't think it is the, the first time that Satan had tried to enter Judas. I really don't think so. I I, I think Satan wanted to destroy Jesus way before that particular moment. Amen. But let me tell you something. Satan will do anything he can to stop the progress of what Jesus is doing and wanting done. And so at that moment, he enters Satan, uh, uh, Judas, and and Jesus tells him, hey, go out, do it quickly. Whatever you got to do, go do it quickly. And The first time we see the attitude of of Judas was really, this didn't happen overnight. We see the attitude that he had when the, the woman came with the alabaster box. And she came and she was worshiping Jesus. She broke that alabaster box. 
And what Judas had no clue of was she was anointing him and, and preparing him for his burial. And, and that, that didn't mean anything to Judas. Uh, uh, he was griping. He, he was basically saying, it's wasted. Here was a lady that was worshiping the Lord with everything she had. She gave God everything she had, and it was very expensive. And, and, and she's bowed down. She's crying. She's pouring this very expensive uh, perfume and stuff over Jesus, getting him ready for his burial. And all Judas could say was, it's a waste. That's a year's wage, wages. You could have, my, you could have, look what you could have done with that. Hallelujah. Judas could see, the only thing he could see in her praise was waste. Jesus, again, I believe at that particular time, Jesus was trying to save Judas. And, and so I believe that, well, you, if you read the text, and I don't have time to go to all the scriptures today, but if you read the text, Jesus was saying, I'm not going to be with you long, Judas. This is, you know, let her worship. She's worshiping like she wants to worship. She gave me what she wanted to give me. Why are you complaining about it? Amen. G Judas, the poor you will have with you always. Let her do what she wants to do. He was reaching for Judas. He was trying to change Judas's mind. Amen. The secret of the story is Satan would have liked to use Judas long before this to hurt Jesus. Well, is anybody here? The fact was, the fact was, Jesus was not done reaching for Judas. Jesus was trying to say Judas. I don't think it was preordained that Judas was going to be the one that betrayed him. I think, I think it just happened. It, somebody had to fill that role. But, but it was Judas and his attitude that led him to that. But all that time, Jesus wasn't wanting it to be. And he's reaching for Judas. He's, he's trying to pull Judas close to him. Amen. And, and, and the fact was that Jesus was not done. And the devil cannot take it out because Jesus was still reaching for Judas. And when he received the sop, it all came to a head. It all came to a point. He takes the sop and Jesus... Looks at him. It's kind of like, okay, you've made your choice. It's finished now. When he received the sop, why did Jesus do it that way? There had to be, I believe, a physical involvement. There had to be a, a clear-cut choice. Whoever takes the sop, whoever takes this is the one. Hallelujah. There had to be something that everybody saw. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. And so Judas reaches out. And then at that time, Jesus said, okay, whatever you're going to do, go do it quickly. Amen. Go do it, Judas. I've reached for you for three and a half years. Now, I, I've tried to change your direction. I've tried to, to help you, and I've, I've tried to, to show you that, that we love you. And, but, but I'm just going to tell you something, Judas. You, you, you Go ahead and go your way now. Go ahead and do what you got to do. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I know you, you got to bear with me for a little bit. I'm going to preach in a second. Well, we got to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Jesus was reaching in his love. Hallelujah. If we can ever realize who we are, it'll change everything. 
Amen. We're not just another religious Religious, what do they call it? What are we? An organization. We're not just another religious thing. You know, people get together and 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 they 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 organize and they try to try to do some things and and they have meetings and and all this. But let me tell you something. We are the church. We are the church that has the truth. Amen. We're not just Johnny come lately. Amen. But we're still doing it like they did on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And I am confident, I really believe this, that we are the church that preaches the salvation message. We may have a lot of things wrong with us in organization wise or even oneness wise or whatever. But let me tell you something. I do believe we got the right, right message to be saved by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is keeping his eye on us. Jesus was looking in Judas' eyes when he grabbed that sop. I believe this. And he's looking at him and there's a sadness in his eyes. And he's looking and he's thinking, Judas, I tried. It didn't work. Okay, now have it your way. Then Satan entered him. The moral of this story is Satan could not inhabit Judas until Jesus let go. All right, I've set the stage now, okay? Amen. I said Jesus hadn't let go of Judas, so there was still hope. Amen. As long as Jesus had not let go. Let me tell you something. Then there was hope for Judas. Satan could not have his way until Jesus let go. Amen. There's there's power in holding on. Amen. I'm preaching to you today about holding on. Amen. Someone today needs to grab a rope. And you need to tie a knot in the end of it. And you need to get your hands around it as tight as you can. And you need to grab hold and and, and take it and say, I am going to hold on to the very end. Amen. You need to glue your hands to that rope of Jesus and say, I am not going to give up. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. There is power in holding on. Amen. I'm telling you right now, as long as you hold on, Satan has to hold off. As long as you're climbing it and trying to seek the Lord, Satan cannot have his way with you. Sometimes we feel weak and we think we're not making it and we're worth nothing. But let me tell you something. If you got just a little bit in you, enough to hold on to that rope and say, God, don't let me go, God. I don't want to go that way. Amen. As long as you got a little bit in you, amen, Satan cannot take control of you. We struggle sometimes because we don't realize who we are. I said that once, I'll say it again. Hallelujah. If we were to realize who we are, it it would be over. It would be over. The enemy would not stand a chance. He doesn't stand a chance anyway, but it would happen quicker. Because we are the children of God. Oh, God loves us. Quit listening to the enemy and him telling you that you're no good and you can't make it and you make too many mistakes and you'll never be able to get up from this one and and, and all this junk that he's whispering in your ear trying to bring you down. Amen. As long as you got a little breath that wants to serve God. Amen. Satan cannot have his way with you. Keep holding on. Come on, say it. Keep holding on. Sometimes we feel sorry for the struggles. So much effort goes into the victory sometimes. You feel like sometimes you've been wrung out, even in the church. 
We feel like the whole world sometimes singles us out. It says those are the crazy ones. And we start feeling sorry for ourselves. Anybody ever felt sorry for yourself? Some of y'all are lying right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something. The devil fights us so hard because we are the only thing standing in his way. Hallelujah. Between him and this world, between him and what he wants, it's what we stand for that the devil can't stand us. Amen. As long as we stand for truth, amen, the devil's going to hate us. Amen. As long as we stand for holiness, the devil's going to hate us. As long as we come and worship with everything we have, amen, the devil's not going to like you. Amen. As long as you get up every once in a while and run the aisles and wave your hands and clap your hands and jump up and down a little bit, nobody else does that anymore, pastor. That's exactly why we should do it. This is a one God, apostolic, tongue-talking, holy, rolling, born-again, heaven-bound, believing church. Hallelujah. As long as we don't let church become dead. I said a long time ago when I first came here, I said, we're not going to have dead church. I'm telling you right now, I'll stop it in the middle of it. Amen. We'll do something to crank it up. Amen. But we're not going to have dead church where we just come all pious and we don't move a muscle and we go home just like we came. Amen. But we're going to have church. Amen. That when we leave, we leave with something that we didn't have when we got here. Amen. When we leave, we leave with the strength of the Lord. When we leave, we leave with the joy rejoicing in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to hold on. I said, we got to hold on. Hallelujah. Amen. Naboth, he wouldn't sell that vineyard because it was his inheritance. I will not sell out my inheritance, he said. And the person who is holding on, there is... There is almost a chemistry between them and heaven. Between them and God. Those that just keep on holding on. There's just something special between them and God. Hallelujah. Amen. God backed up Naboth. And he'll back you up if you're holding on. Hallelujah. That little woman who is praying... For her wayward son. Oh hallelujah. Amen. There's somebody in here that's been praying for your family. Amen. There's somebody in here. Maybe your husband is not serving God. And you've been praying for him for years. Sister Michelle. And probably others. Oh but you know what I like. <laughs> you hold on. Oh I'm not letting go. You know what I like about Sister Michelle? She says, he gave me a promise. I don't know how many years it's been now. 19 years ago. He gave me a promise. He said, he's going to save my family. And he's going to save my husband. Through all this junk, 19 years, ups and downs. And man, he is, he's giving you pure hell sometimes. Wanting to leave and get out of here. Hallelujah. Amen, but let me tell you something. Just keep holding on, Sister Michelle. It's going to happen quicker than you think. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here today. You've got stuff you prayed for. Amen, you've got stuff you fasted for. You've got things that you have prayed and you don't seem like nothing is happening. But I'm telling you, if you'll reach a little higher and grab on to God again and say, God, I will not let go. Amen, I am claiming my promise and I'm going to get it. I know you're going to give it to me. I have faith that you're going to give it to me. Oh, come on, somebody shout unto the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody here today specifically. Amen. You think you cannot live for God. That it is too hard. But I'm here to tell you. You keep coming to church for some reason every once in a while. Amen. You keep showing up because you know there's something here for you. And you know that God is here for you. Don't let the enemy tell you that God has given up on you. That is a lie. If you can just hold on with your fingertips. The devil's got to back off. Oh, God will let him go so far, but he's got to back off. Amen. He cannot have his way with you as long as you don't give up. I think the Lord saw that that little woman. That was getting all kinds of problems from the judge, the unjust judge. And I believe he told some angels. He had a couple angels. She was, she was hanging on. She was just going back, going back, going back. I believe he told his, one of his angels, hey, you stand on that side of her, and you stand on that side of her. And don't let anybody mess with that little woman. Don't let the devil mess with her. Amen. Why? Because she just keeps on holding on. Oh, hallelujah. As long as she holds on, don't let nothing touch her. As long as she holds on, don't let anybody mess with her. Let me tell somebody today, you're not by yourself. <laughs> That's another one the enemy uses. But you got more friends of God around you than you can imagine. You got more angels around you. God has appointed to you. I believe in angels. The Bible talks about it. I don't, I don't know so much about commanding them to do this and that and do your toenails and fingernails and all that stuff. But I'm telling you something. God protects them. Amen. The Satan, when he fell, he took a quarter of the angels with him. Oh, wow, we're dead. No, we're not. God kept three quarters of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they're stronger than the bad ones. Oh, God's going to do something supernatural before we leave. We're not by ourselves. Keep holding on. One of the biggest tricks of the devil is to make us feel alone. He wants us to get under the juniper tree like Elijah did. I never could understand that. Elijah just whipped 450 prophets of Baal and he's one, running from one woman. And he gets under the ju juniper tree after that great victory on the mountaintop. And he's hiding under there. Hallelujah. But God said, no, Elijah, you're not seeing things correctly. I've got 7,000 people that hadn't bowed. He thought he was all alone. And God had to remind him, hey, i got things going on that you don't even know about, buddy. So get up and do your job. Get up out of that molly grubs. Get out from under that juniper tree. Everything is going to be all right. Well, hallelujah. Hold on. As long as you hold on, Jesus won't let you go. I want to get that in somebody's heart today. As long as you hold on, Jesus will not let you go. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Amen. Hold on as long as you can hold on. We're going to have revival. The devil tries to put doubt in everybody's mind. But let me tell you something. God has already ordained it. Amen. 
Amen. Realize every tree goes through its seasons. Every tree. It may be winter time in your life right now. And everything seems cold, dark, and there, there's no sunlight. But let me tell you something. Spring's coming around the corner. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't make decisions. Don't do things when you're in your winter. Amen. Don't do things when it seems like everything's shed its leaves and everything is barren. Just hang on. Hold on for just a little bit because in a few months there's coming spring around the corner and there's going to be new growth and you're going to see fruit happening and hanging off of your tree. Amen. Just hold on a little longer. I'm telling you, if you want to make heaven, you've got to hold on. You've got to make up your mind. I'm holding on until those clouds split. Amen. With the glory of the Lord, until he comes and gets me, I'm going to be hanging on and holding on. Let's stand. Abraham, I want to tell you how God works. Abraham, things are going wrong in your city. Lot, your nephew, has got himself in a mess of trouble. And even though Abraham went the other direction, cut himself finally off from Lot, God said, you know what? I've got a friend over here that's still hanging on. He's holding on. Here's how God views us. And we need to realize this and realize who we are. God says, I can't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until I go have a chat with Abraham. He's my friend. He's been hanging on. Has he made mistakes? Oh, absolutely. If you think Abraham was one that didn't make any mistakes, then you need to read it again. He made a lot of mistakes, but God says, hey, I'm going to go talk to Abraham. And those people around Abraham, like, who's those, who's those guys standing in front of your house? And how does Abraham tell them, well, it's angels from God? He goes, well, yeah, you know, it's just somebody I know. <laughs> and so they come, and they talk to Abraham. And Abraham starts telling God, God, can't you save it if there's just 50 righteous there? What does God say? Okay, I'll save it. There goes the process. They get down all the way to 10, was it? Was it 10? Am I remembering that right? 10 righteous souls. God said, I will save Sodom and Gomorrah if there's 10 righteous souls. Now, what did I tell you that for? I want you to realize that we are partners with God. If we are holding on to what we should be holding on to, God is even going to ask us to do some things. He's going to ask us before He does some things. Hallelujah. Just think about that. The God that created everything is fixing to destroy wickedness. But He asked Abraham, and Abraham says, just, just, just hold off, just, just come on, let me work with me here. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Did you know if you're praying and you have a relationship with God, you need to pray some prayers like this. God, save my family. God, if you'll just do this and this and this. God, I want you to show them today that, that you are God. I want you to show them today that, that you're still active in their life. I want you to, to do something today and show them where they feel your love so powerfully. 
that they cannot deny it. Talk to God. Ask Him to do some things because you're holding on. There is power in holding on. Amen. God wouldn't bring judgment on Sodom until He talked to Abraham. Amen. The woman with the unjust judge. Amen. As long as she was holding on. Amen. God was going to take care of her. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many has been going through some battles? It seems like sometimes when you just come from the mountaintop. Brother Daniels. It seems like all of a sudden God can't be found. We feel that way anyway. Amen. We're in our new building. We're so excited. Hallelujah. God's done great things. Amen. We all did a good job, I think. That's what everybody's telling me. Anyway. Amen. But if we're not careful, there's this thing called... We, 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 we climbed a little higher. We got to the mountaintop. And if we're not careful, we'll be like Elijah. It hits me every once in a while. I'm going to be, I'm going to be transparent with you. When that rent bill comes due, I'm like, my God, what did I, what, what, what did we do? And if we're not careful, we can slip down and get a little bit discouraged. What do we do now? But you know what? I hope there's people here that's got a grip on something that's connected to God. And you say, God, we are going to hold on no matter what happens. Come on, if you're here today and you've been holding on to something, maybe you haven't got your promise yet, but you are holding on. You need to step out of the pew right now and you need to come down to an altar and remind God that you're still holding on. And you need to remind the enemy, hey, I am still a child of God. Come on, what do you need from the Lord today? Amen, come on down. You need to tell somebody that, hey, I'm still going to be serving God next week. Amen. I'm still going to be coming to church and praising God next week. Amen. I am never going to let go. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to hold on. Come on. How many of you is going to hold on? Come on. It's time to come to the altar and open up your mouth. Amen. Verbalize it to God. God, I'm holding on. Lord, I'm going to hang on and hold on, Lord. Amen. I know as long as I'm hanging on to you that everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to praise the Lord. Begin to praise the Lord. Begin to worship Him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Come on, command those voices that have been talking to you. Command them to leave. Tell them, I'm not going to listen to you, the voices of defeat anymore.